Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 13th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I mentioned how Didier went over his uh, plugin message summary tool that allows you to easier take apart Outlook message files. Well, as it happens uh, that uh, readers, of course, are trying this out on different files and one ran into an interesting, fairly complex file, at least that's sort of what it looked like. And DDA had a look uh, to see what's actually going on here. So what happened here was that the email that was inside the message file actually had another message file as an attachment. And that leads to nested message files that can be quite complex when you sort of first look at all the list of components within the file. Now, the day shows how to make sense of all of this data and in the end also how to quickly extract the subjects for the affected emails, which of course then already gives you some insight as to what exactly was contained in these different files. And looks like a lot of interest is being paid to the TrickBot botnet lately. And the most recent action was taken by Microsoft by obtaining court orders to actually disable IP addresses and trying to disrupt the command and control servers that are responsible for TrickBot. Now, oftentimes, of course, it doesn't take uh, that much effort and ISPs will cooperate or domain registrars and such. Uh, but uh, once a uh, botnet has sort of learned how to evade various tricks and found essentially some form of bulletproof hosting, yes, it can get quite difficult and court orders and such are needed. And Microsoft took the lead because they felt also that some of their trademarks were violated by TrickBot, which gave them some legal standing to obtain these court orders. TrickBot started out sort of as a banking trojan, but uh, what makes it uh, more dangerous sort of more recently is that it really has become sort of a malware as a service operation in that TrickBot itself can be used to drop various other pieces of malware, has been used quite widely, for example, for ransomware. It does remain, however, to be seen how effective uh, this action is. Apparently, there are still a number of command control servers for TrickBot that are still active. So maybe it'll just take a little bit more time. Or yes, there are some hosting providers that are immune to this kind of court action. And Google outlined some interesting changes to how Google Chrome caching will work in order to preserve privacy. So one common trick how uh, users are being tracked across uh, different sites without cookies is, well, the caching of files. So the user visits the first site and a file is being cached with a unique name. Then the next site the user visits may include that identical file from that original site. And of course, if it's cached, well, it won't be loaded again. And that's sort of how a user User could be tracked as they visit different sites. What Google will change about how caching works is how the files that are being cached are essentially indexed. And now currently, and that's kind of logical DRL that was used to retrieve the file is used as a key. And that way, no matter which site requests uh, the file, uh, the key remains the same. So what they'll do now is they'll add the site that actually requests the file. For example, you're going to sans.org, you're downloading an image that's hosted on sans.org. It will be indexed or the key will be sans.org and then sans.org again. Now, if you're going to the Internet Storm Center's website and we happen to include the same image from sans.org, yes, it will be cached, but it will be keyed under isc.sans.edu and then sans.org. So both domains will be part of the key and that way it will be considered a new file and it will be downloaded 
again. And I can't tell that you visited Sans.org before. Now, of course, this has some effects on the efficiency of caches. Google does claim that it does increase the miss rate only by 3.6% and does decrease the page display speed on average by 0.3% because these resources have to be downloaded again. Uh, overall, doesn't sound like a huge impact. I wonder how much it will affect uh, some like larger libraries like jQuery and such uh, that are literally being loaded from thousands of sites or millions of sites from a particular CDN. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.